Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Bravo Pada, Bravo Pada, Bravo Pada, Jaya, Bravo Pada, Jaya, Bravo Pada. 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 Jaya, Jai. Namaskar Hari Das Thakur Ki Jai Prem Subhaho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Siddhveda Gadadha Shwasti Gaur Bhakta Rindiki Jai Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopi Da Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Ki Jai Sri Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai Navadakam Ki Jai Ganga Shamuna Tulasi Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Rindiki Jai Samavetta Bhakta Rindiki Jai Go, Premanandi, all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gurangam. Glories to Srila Prabhupada. Namo Vishnu Badaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Saraswata Deve Gauravani Prachadane Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashtachade Shatarane Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shivasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare In this work uh, Rupa Goswami started out with identifying the obstacles to bhakti starting with vacho vegam manasakrodha vegam and after describing the obstacles then he indicated the uh, favorable items like enthusiasm and uh, determination and then he went on to discuss the uh, association of devotees how we can exchange with devotees in various ways and how we should never offend the devotee and give respect to all the devotees uh, and it's through that uh, respect for the devotees that we get the knowledge uh, we saw that the one of the characteristics of exchange of affection was uh, to give knowledge and receive knowledge uh, uh, so we can only uh, get that knowledge if we deal correctly with the devotees, particularly the senior devotees. So the uh, verse, the last verse yesterday we discussed is that uh, we have different types of devotees, so we give mental respect uh, to someone that chants the name once 
and we give physical respect or offer obeisances to one who has taken diksha and who's seriously practicing and then uh, we serve uh, uh, with devotion that devotee who is very fixed in devotional service as a result of that then we get teachings and we learn how to perform our bhakti properly so here uh, the next whole section is how to perform bhakti and if we examine it closely we see it is uh, very much dedicated to serving in Vrindavan and the mood of the Brajavasis <laughs> So, uh, this is the verse here. One should spend all one's time engaged in the mind and tongue in remembering and glorifying Krishna's name, form, and pastimes, living in Raja and in following the footsteps of the great devotees with great love for Krishna. Uh, so, in the Nectar Devotion, of course, we also find uh, a similar statement or statements and this can be taken as a very general statement but also <laughs> we look in the description of Raganuga Sadhana we'll find this is very very close to that um, in the section on Sadhana Bhakti uh, there are two types Vaidhi uh, which means following the rules and regulations and Raganuga following after the inhabitants of Raja which indicates a more spontaneous type of devotion. What this also means is that in Vaidhi Bhakti, we give great regard to the Lord. We have great respect for the Lord. And we see Him as Supreme Lord. Whereas in Raghunuga Bhakti, we don't see the Lord as the Lord. We see Him as the friend or the lover or the parent or the child, etc. So, uh, it's a, the concept of the Lord is quite different. So, uh, and of course, uh, if we want to enter into those pastimes in Vrindavan, then we have to adopt that type of mood also. Uh, we can't enter Vrindavan and say, oh, here's the Supreme Lord, <laughs> like Brahma. We can't do that. <laughs> uh, we have to see Krishna as the friend, or Krishna as the lover, or Krishna as the child, etc. Uh, so to do that, then we have that practice of uh, Raghunuga Bhakti. Uh, so, of course, it's also very similar in many ways to uh, Vaidhi Bhakti in Sadhana. In Vaidhi Bhakti, we also engage the mind and the tongue in remembering and glorifying the Lord. What do we do? We do Kirtan, we do Japa. Uh, we think of the Lord. Uh, um, we don't live in Vrindavan, but we try to live near a temple. Uh, and we follow in the footsteps of the great Acharyas also. So, it's, it's quite similar. Uh, or well, the only thing, of course, as I said, the concept with which we uh, do that. So, uh, in Raghunuga Sadhana, uh, we often think of people doing Raghunuga as being quite different, but they actually, um, according to the scriptures that we have, like nectar devotion, uh, they follow a very similar type of conduct externally. Uh, they may follow many of the same angas of bhakti that the person following Vaidhi Bhakti follows. So simply by looking at them externally, we cannot tell what type of bhakti they're doing. <laughs> uh, but there's also a prominence of certain things like um, uh, absorption in the Lord, remembrance, and a more chanting, etc. Uh, uh, so, the, uh, in Nectar Devotion, it is said that the, um, there's two aspects of the Raghunuga Sadhana. One is uh, to act like a normal devotee, like uh, Rupa Goswami or Sanatana Goswami living in Vrindavan. So they worship deities, they study scripture, they discuss with each other, uh, they um, uh, do kirtan. Uh, they chant japa, etc. So that's the external activity. The internal activity, of course, is remembering the Lord and his pastimes. And then there's a more particular type of meditation in which one identifies oneself as a resident of Braja and one serves in that particular body. And this is what gives rise to that controversy called the Siddha Pranali, 
where the guru gives you your manjari bhava or whatever your identity is a manjari and then you meditate on that and you serve in that, that way yeah. so uh, that's the more controversial part of it <laughs> so that's the uh, in part of the internal service remembering the Lord and his pastimes and then serving in that particular body uh, for the Lord and it's not so mm, controversial in one sense except as um, uh, uh, the aspect of Madhurya Rasa which is more confidential and therefore Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says that uh, the, the regular devotee shouldn't read Govinda Lilamrita which is the um, pastimes of Krishna and Radha in eight parts of the day you get us all Madhurya Rasa uh, and instead he says uh, we read other things so uh, there's some controversy over the pastimes of Radha and Krishna uh, for neophyte devotees. Uh, however, Raghunuga does not only mean uh, Manjari Bhava or Saki Bhava. It's all of the Bhavas in Vrindavan. So we also have Vatsalya Bhava or Sakya Bhava in Raghunuga Bhakti. Uh, so in fact, um, there was a line Though the main, at the present moment, the main lines are all acting like a manjari. Um, previously, there was a line uh, which cultivated sakya, friendship. Uh, and one would identify as a cowherd boy and then uh, meditate on cowherd boy pastimes with Krishna, getting up in the morning and going to greet Krishna when he wakes up and then dining with Krishna in the morning with Nanda Maharaj and then milking the cows with Krishna and then going out in the fields with Krishna and playing with Krishna and then coming back in the evening so these were the meditations for Sakya Bhav, <laughs> Raghunuga Bhakti all described in one booklet by uh, Nayan Ananda uh, so uh, just like we have uh, uh, pastimes of uh, uh, Radha and Krishna in eight parts of the day so we have the pastimes of Krishna with the coward boys in eight parts of the day and one meditates on that uh, so there was a group at one time who were following that process so that would not be so controversial uh, and again we have a whole Sampradaya dedicated to Vatsalya Raghunuga that's uh, the followers of Vallabha Acharya uh, so they worship baby Krishna and the mood is not Vaidhi but that of Raghunuga so they're always thinking of how to serve Krishna because he's a small child and they cook for him and serve him in that way so uh, that, there's nothing controversial about that also they, they don't have any choice there is no Vaidhi Bhakti in their whole Sampradaya it's all Raghunuga but it's Vasalya but, so there's no problem there so the controversy has arisen in the Gaudiya Sampradaya because of the Madhurya Bhava aspects and then the um, Apasambradayas that resulted from that uh, with different uh, groups doing various things which are not according to the scripture so uh, getting back to the uh, Raguna Sadhana it is uh, uh, the, the process by which one can uh, finally realize a relationship with Krishna in Vrindavan in the spiritual world where one does not see uh, Krishna is Supreme Lord but in a relationship of friendship or uh, as a parent of Krishna or as the lover of Krishna uh, so that's the the internal services where you identify with your uh, particular body there uh, in the spiritual world and serve Krishna like that so that becomes a part of the Raghunuga Bhakti uh, because a lot of devotees are not so used to um, internal cultivation in the form of meditation or smaranam it may be a little difficult for them and so therefore in the beginning of devotional service for many people it's easier simply to uh, do vaidhi bhakti and uh, concentrate on the external aspects in vaidhi bhakti though we concentrate on the external aspects we should not think that it's all external because if we do, then it is, uh, that means there's no devotion. So 
we do have to cultivate a, a relationship with the Lord and have feeling for the Lord. So that's our internal relationship also. So whether it is Vaidhi Bhakti or Raghunoya, we do have to have some internal aspect of cultivation as well. So one um, remembers the pastimes of the Lord, one uh, chants the name of the Lord uh, and remembers his, uh, the Lord's pastimes in Vrindavan. And one of the important aspects is living in Raja. Uh, this is emphasized in many places. Of course, we even say one of the important aspects of bhakti is living in the Dham, one of the five important aspects, not even just in Raghavadugu, but in general, even in Vaidhi Bhakti, living in the Dham. So, but in particular for uh, Vaidhi ba uh, Raghunuga Bhakti, one would live in Vrindavan in order to cultivate that uh, mood of Vrindavan. So, uh, in other words, the spiritual place has a great influence on one's sadhana. Uh, we can't understand how that takes place, but then that's the, the truth. That's why it's emphasized. And one should follow in the footsteps of the Vrajavasis. That actually is what Raganuga means. So that's explained by Rupa Goswami and Nectar Devotion. Anuga means to follow. Ga means to go. Anu means after. Follow after. Go after. <laughs> follow after. Uh, raga. Uh, raga Anuga. So Raga uh, stands for uh, Ragatmaka Bhaktas. Uh, so Ragatmaka Bhaktas are the people of Vrindavan. They have Raga. And what is the definition of Raga? It's intense love for Krishna, such that we don't see him as Supreme Lord. So that, that's the quality of all the people in Vrindavan, the Rajabhasi. So therefore, they're called Raga Atmaka. Atmaka means they're completely filled with this Raga, this great attraction for Krishna. So we follow after them, and that's called Raganuga Bhakti. Uh, following after doesn't mean imitating, uh, but uh, we cultivate uh, a relationship like the inhabitants of Raja. Uh, and um, the method is to select uh, an ideal person with that particular rasa uh, and become the follower of that person. Uh, uh, so we become the follower of some uh, servant of Krishna, like Raktaka, or the follower of a cowherd boy like Subal, uh, or the follower of uh, Nanda and Yasoda, Vatsaya Rasa, or the follower of the Gopis, or Radharani, or Manjari, whatever. So we follow after persons within uh, Vrindavan, and that's called Raganuga. In this uh, work, uh, Upadeshamrita, in the commentary, then uh, Prabhupada mentions the different stages. Uh, he doesn't go into detail about them. They're also mentioned by Bhaktivinoda Thakur in several places, including Chaitanya Shikshamrita, and I think also in Harinam Chintamani. He mentions the different stages that one goes through in Raghunuga Bhakti. So we have uh, Shravana Dasa. Hearing. So we hear uh, about sadhana, we hear about sambandha gyan, we hear about the goal, uh, we hear about the wonderful pastimes of Krishna and Vrindavan and develop our attraction for Krishna and Vrindavan. Uh, and during that time we chant without offense continuously. Hmm? Well, this is a um, preparatory stage. Varana dasa. Varana means to accept. So what do we accept? Uh, we accept the Siddha Rupa. The Guru gives you that form. This is the Siddha Pranali thing where he gives you the form. It may not be the Siddha Pranali as we see now in practice, but at least he'll indicate a form. In Jaiva Dharma, uh, there's a story of uh, two um, people, uh, young adults, um, and they visit the Babaji 
in uh, Godrum Dvipa, you know, very attracted to his, uh, you know, explanations, to his chanting, etc. And they want to be devotees, and, uh, and they're practicing, and develop themselves. And at a certain point, they come to the Guru and say, well, yeah, we would like to, you know, practice <laughs> Raghunuga Bhakti. <laughs> so then the Guru says, okay, what kind of mood do you have? So one says, oh, I like to be a cowherd boy. I like to follow after the cowherd boys in Vrindavan. So then he gives him a, an identity as a cowherd boy. Okay, that's your surup. <laughs> Go meditate on that. And the other one says, oh, I want to follow after the gopis and the manjaris. I guess so. Then he gives him a manjari <laughs> form like that. They're, so he gives them both different forms like that. So, But he doesn't give all those what we call the ekadas bhavas that are the also the uh, siddha pranali thing. In any case, um, or doesn't mention in detail at least. So, the uh, Varnadasa means the uh, Guru gives you some form and then you meditate on that form and uh, serve in that form in your meditation. Hmm? So, once you get that, then you start remembering. <laughs> You use that form and you meditate, I am so-and-so person in front of, and, and in the morning I do the service, and afternoon I do the service, etc. Uh, that's called smarnadasa. And of course, we cannot do it perfectly, but we try to concentrate the mind on that meditation. And it goes through stages, much like yoga. In yoga we have a stage called dharana, which is uh, ability to concentrate a little bit. <laughs> and when it becomes um, more complete, we call it jhana or meditation. Okay? When it's more complete and constant, it's called anusmriti. And when it's complete absorption, it is called samadhi, which is the, actually the goal of the eighth limb of Astanga Yoga. Hmm. Uh, so uh, the uh, remembrance turns into meditation and finally into samadhi. And in that samadhi then one enters into the pastimes of Krishna. Uh, and one is a particular uh, servant or gopi or friend or parent, etc. Uh, then apanadasa, after the smaranadasa, which ends with the samadhi apanadasa. Uh, you don't have to meditate on your body that you're serving in. You get it. <laughs> you automatically have that body and you perceive the Lord directly. So it's, it's, no, uh, it's not a practice anymore. So you realize your spiritual identity. This will take place, uh, begin to take place in bhava and then it becomes more perfect in prema. And then you realize everything about spiritual world and Krishna and uh, everyone there. So the last stage is called Sampati or Prapanadasa or Vastu Siddhi. That means we give up the material body completely and then all we have left is Atma with the spiritual body and we're in the spiritual world. So those are the, the stages described here. Now if one does not do Raghunuga Bhakti like this, uh, still with Vaidhi Bhakti one can also come up to bhava and prema. And if you get bhava and prema and you see the Lord, obviously you must have spiritual eyes and you're going to serve him so you have a spiritual body also. So whether you practice raghunuga or vaidhi bhakti, if you get bhava and prema, then you end up with a spiritual body, etc. Anyway, so what's the difference? Why would you practice raghunuga? So the raghunuga is particularly to get a body in Goloko Vrindavan. Okay. where we, we are participating with Krishna in his pastimes like that. If we do Vaidhi Bhakti, we have on veneration in our sadhana, and that continues into bhava and prema. So when you realize Krishna, you'll realize, oh, he's Supreme Lord. <laughs> like Vasudeva and Devaki, when they see Krishna, oh, yes, he's our son, but he's also Supreme Lord. So it, it's not quite the same, the realization. So we can have a parent like Nanda Nyasoda who see Krishna only as their child or we have Vasudeva Devaki who see Krishna as their child but also as Supreme Lord. So their prema is not so intense. So if we go through Vaidhi Bhakti we end up with a, a less intense form of prema and then we're not qualified for 
Goloka Vrindavan. So we can go to Mathura Dwarka or to a place called Aishvarya Goloka, which is Krishna as a cowherd boy, but all the people there, including the gopis and including Nanda Nyasoda, they also see Krishna as sort of like God, <laughs> but he's a cowherd boy. So that's an alternative. Uh, so, uh, if you want, we want to see Krishna only as cowherd boy, then we practice that Raghunuga. Uh, Vishnu Chakrabarti also says, you, how do you get this Siddha Rupa that you meditate on? He says, you could get it from your guru, you could get it from another person, maybe a Shiksha guru of some sort, or it could arise spontaneously within with neither, not a guru, external guru at all. So simply by your cultivation, eventually you develop a, a certain form and you meditate on that form and you develop until you can the bhava and prema. Okay, so that, that's the, uh, the general sadhana, which is taught by the guru. Uh, then we have these verses. The holy place, uh, because it talked about living in the holy dham, Raja. So this is a glorification of Vrindavan. The holy place known as Mathura is spiritually superior to Vakunta. Superior to Mathura is the transcendental forest of Vrindavan because of Krishna's Rasalila. So it's with Vrindavan that we get some of the uh, most astonishing pastimes of Krishna. And of all the pastimes that Krishna, the Raslila is considered to be the highest, the most astonishing. So this becomes the center of the whole Bhagavatam. Of course, tenth canto was the center of Bhagavatam, but in the tenth canto, the uh, verses describing the Raslila are considered the highest of all. <laughs> yeah. uh, and we'll find that, of course, there's many acharyas who comment on the whole Bhagavatam. When we come to the tenth canto, then we get many, many more commentaries on the Ras Leela chapters than anything else. So, uh, Vrindavan is superior to Mathura. Of course, we can say the whole Mathura area is one thing within that uh, Vrindavan is most excellent. Superior to the forest of Vrindavan is Govardhan Hill, for it was raised by the divine hand of Krishna was the site of his various loving pastimes. Uh, so uh, superior. Uh, so Govardhan Hill, we have the Govardhan Leela, where Krishna lifts up the hill with his hand, uh, which indicates his great attraction for it. And therefore, um, Govardhan is considered to be the best servant of Krishna. Uh, but apart from that uh, pastime, um, in the other pastimes, uh, the pastimes with Radha and the gopis, we often find Govardhan Hill mentioned. Uh, so it is uh, part of his uh, pastimes in uh, different rasas like Sakya Rasa or Madhurya Rasa as well. Okay. Ah, actually, the, uh, when uh, Krishna was with Balaram and then Brahma stole all the calves and cowherd boys and then Krishna manifested himself as all the ca calves and cowherd boys and then they would go to Govardhan <laughs> and then after one year Balaram saw all the cows on the top of Govardhan hill and then they saw their calves, the calves which are actually Krishna at the bottom of the hill and then the cows began running down the hill. And the cowherd men were very angry because they didn't want the cows to go out of control. They wanted to keep them on the hill for grazing. And they're running after the, co the cows, uh, scolding them <laughs> and telling them to stop. But the cows would not listen to the cowherd men. Huh? And then finally the cows got to the bottom and they began licking their calves who were actually Krishna. They were so attracted to those calves. They forgot about their other calves that had been born the next year. They were so attracted to these calves and, uh, that whenever they saw them, they came running to them like this. And the cowherd men came running down the hill angrily uh, because they were uh, trying to stop the cows and they couldn't do so. When they got to the bottom of the hill, then they saw their sons. So when they saw their sons, 
they forgot about the calves and the cows and they began embracing their sons because it was all Krishna. Huh? And then Balaram thought, this is very strange. Why are those cows so attracted to those calves? Why are the parents so attracted to their children suddenly that they weren't like that last year, but suddenly they're completely attached to their children? They forgot their anger and everything, and they're simply crying and embracing their children. Why is this? Huh? So then Balaram thought about this, and then he, and he thought various things. It cannot be some trick of demons because I cannot be bewildered by demons. It cannot be some devatas impersonating the cows, calves and the cowherd boys, because they can't do that either. It's not great rishis. And he went through all sorts of alternatives. Can't be this, cannot be that. Actually, nobody can do this except Krishna. He's the only one that can fool me. <laughs> so then he looked very closely and he said, yeah, it's all Krishna. <laughs> But for one year, he couldn't figure it out either. So in other words, Krishna had bewildered Balaram for one year. Which means that Krishna is supreme <laughs> above everybody else. So then he went and asked Krishna, what did you do? And then Krishna explained everything. <laughs> so anyway, uh, all this took place on uh, this, uh, where Brahma's, uh, Brahm Balaram's realization of what had happened took place on Govardhan Hill also. <laughs> And there are caves in Govardhan Hill, and when the monsoon season comes, Krishna runs into the caves. Huh? And then they uh, have snacks with roots and fruits from Govardhan Hill, etc. So, Govardhan Hill, very nice. But above all, the excellent Radha Kund stands supreme, for it's overflooded with the ambrosia prema of Krishna. Where then is that intelligent person who is unwilling to serve this Radha Kund at the foot of Govardhan Hill? So in other words, um, Rupa Goswami has, uh, by showing the different places, ultimately he comes to Radha Kund and says that's the most excellent place uh, of all. Why Radha Kund? Because of course uh, this is uh, Radha's uh, pond. So, um, as I said, th this is a glorification of the Holy Dham. And uh, in practice, we do hearing and chanting, uh, remembering the Lord, etc. And we do that within the Dhamma. Uh, and the Dhamma also is a very important aspect of our sadhana. So that's why the Dhamma is glorified here. We have um, Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur. He's written over a thousand verses glorifying Vrindavan. <laughs> just uh, one glorification after the other. Uh, it's to show the you know importance of the place. Yeah. So we have the, the general area, which we can say is Mathura, which is greater than Vaikuntha. Of course, the whole of Vaikuntha, the spiritual world we can call Vaikuntha. Within that, we have the, the Mathura area. Within that, we get the Vrindavan area. Within the Vrindavan area, we get the Govardhan Hill area. And then within that, finally, we get Radhakund, is the uh, most sweet, the sweetest place of all, because of the pastimes of Radha and Krishna there. Uh, so if you go to works like Govinda Lilamrita, uh, many of the pastimes take place at Radha Kund. There's different um, bowers, uh, houses made out of um, creepers and trees and things like that. Um, and within those bowers, then there's all sorts of pastimes taking place between Krishna and the gopis. And all around the Radha Kund, there's uh, each uh, Saki has a, a bower. <laughs> And then in the center of the uh, kunda, there's also a pavilion there, or rather in Krishna also have pastimes. So in other words, uh, everything is spiritual, yet there's an increasing excellence as we uh, go to these different places and finally get to Radha Kund, and there we have the sweetest aspect of all. Yeah, which is like that, and right next to Radha Kund is Shama Kund. We see in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that when Lord Chaitanya went to uh, Vrindavan, uh, then he was looking for Radha Kund everywhere. 
and then finally he found it. It was in a, a rice field somewhere, or a field, <laughs> some little pond in a field. And so after he discovered it, later on it was enlarged and excavated, etc., until we, it comes out of the form we have it today. Originally it was just a pond in the field someplace, but gradually they developed that and put stairs on it and everything, and uh, put it in its present form. Uh, oh, this is where he uh, killed Aristasura. Mm -hmm. Or at that time he killed Aristasura and then uh, Radha said, oh, you're impure because he killed a bull. Mm -hmm. So then Krishna made a pond and then Radha made the pond, her own pond, in competition with Krishna. Yeah, so there's Lord Chaitanya there. <laughs> uh, in ecstasy. Okay. So, superior to fruit of workers, the jnani is favored by the Supreme Lord. So, jnana is superior to karma. Superior to the jnanis are the devotees freed from jnana. So, bhakti is superior to jnana. The devotee who has attained prema is superior. And among those who have attained prema, the gopis are the best among the devotees. Radha is superior to all the gopis who would not take shelter of her kunda. So the verse not only glorifies the kunda of Radha, but also Radha herself. So Radha kunda was the best place, and then among all the people, Radha is the best devotee of all. So this is a glorification of Radharani. Yeah. So we have the karmis at the bottom. They are, one sense, okay, fine, because they're following the Vedic rules, following scripture, and they're gradually getting purified. But better than them are the jnanis, because the jnanis are striving to get out of the material world. Better than those are the devotees, because they recognize and worship the Supreme Lord. And they, if they develop, they get to prema, that's superior. And among all those who have attained uh, prema, the gopis in Vrindavan are supreme. And among all the gopis, Radha is the top. Uh, so therefore, this verse is a glorification of Radha. In the Haribhakti uh, Vilas, uh, <laughs> Radha is not even mentioned. <laughs> it's a whole work on deity worship. And it mentions how to worship Krishna. It never mentions Radha at all in there. <laughs> so it's a little strange. Uh, but in compensation, then we have all these other works. And there's always glorification of Radha in the various works to the Goswamis on the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, etc. We have great glorification of Radha, so uh, yeah, very, very prominent there. Of course, in the Bhagavatam, people will say, well, Radha isn't even mentioned there. But this is an example of Parokshavada, or indirect expression, where Sukadev Goswami does not mention things directly. He hides the meaning. Uh, I mentioned that uh, Bhagavatam is like Mohini Avatar. So some of the meanings are not directly spoken um, in order to uh, give the sweetness to the devotee and hide it from the materialists. <laughs> so uh, the whole uh, section uh, describing all the gopis and the Raslila, and then Radha's name is not directly mentioned. That is an example of this paroksha bad to uh, disguise the meaning, etc. Yet all the Goswamis they point out in their commentaries on this section, this one's, this is Radha, this is Visaka, this is Lalita. And they point out the different gopis involved in the uh, Raslila and the descriptions. Uh, so therefore, even the Bhagavatam ultimately is glorifying the love of Radha and Krishna. So Radha is never alone. She has her group. So in the spiritual world, among all the gopis in Vrindavan, there are 
millions of gopis, uh, and they form into groups uh, of uh, persons or devotees who have similar types of moods. Of course, within Madhurya Rasa, we have various moods. Uh, some gopis are more bold and harsh. Some are very sweet. Some are soft. Some are innocent. Uh, some are older. Some are younger. Like this, we got all sorts of varieties mentioned. Ujjwal Nila Mani. <laughs> so they form into groups. Uh, huge groups. And we have. Uh, called yutas, and each yuta has a head, a leader, called a nayaka. She's the main gopi within that group, and she's the leader. Uh, so, of all the groups, then we have the top group, that's Radha's group, and then Radha is the leader of that group. Second group is Chandravali's group, and then she's the head of that group. And then we have other groups as well, <laughs> all sorts of groups there with their heads. And they're all serving Krishna. But the topmost group is Radha's group, and then Radha is the topmost of all. Okay. Of all the lovable gopis, Radha is the dearest. In every respect, her kunda is described by great sages as similarly dear to him. So, um, like the kunda, uh, is uh, Radha is um, dear to Krishna, so the Kunda of Radha is also dear to Krishna. Huh? That Prema is very rarely attained even by great devotees, therefore it's even more difficult for ordinary devotees to attain. But if one simply bathes once within those holy waters, one's Prema, similar to Radha's, is fully aroused. So if you bathe in Radha Kunda, you get that type of Prema, and you'll join Radha's group in the spiritual world. That's the promise given here. So, uh, Radha Kunda is a pond of water, but it's non-different from Radha. And it's produced by Radha, and it's non-different from her. Uh, so, uh, in the spiritual world, everything is like non-different from it. Everything is like one in one sense. So, uh, Radha is non-different from her Kunda, and non-different from her Prema. So, if you associate with her Kunda, then you can get Prema, similar to Radha's Prema. By doing manasa seva, that's mental service with the siddha day at this place, while continually chanting, completely inundated with the water of prema from Radha Kun, the jiva will attain his vastu siddhi at the point of death, which means he'll give up his material body and enter into the spiritual world near Radha Kun. So the original uh, thread here is that it was glorifying uh, living in the Dham because the devotees want to hear and chant and live in the Dham. So where do you live? Uh, you live in Mathura, you live in Vrindavan, you live near Govardhan, and finally you live near Radhakun. <laughs> and if you do your sadhana there, hearing and chanting, etc., then you will attain, and you bathe in Radhakun, and then you will attain uh, Prema, like Radha, in the spiritual world. So there are different levels. The lowest is called Rati or Bhava. We talk about Bhava and then Prema, so that Bhava is Rati. So that's the very general Stai Bhava that you have, emotional relationship with the Lord. It becomes a little more intense, it's called Prema. And uh, even if you have all sorts of obstructions, as the gopis get obstructions from the parents, etc., still uh, their Prema does not go away. Uh, it continues. So, uh, stronger than that is sneha. This means the heart melts. Uh, uh, and man, which means anger, manifests. This is particularly manifested in Madhurya Rasa, where the gopis may get angry at Krishna for some reason or other, and then they refuse to see him. Uh, pranaya, which means great intimacy. Uh, raga. Uh, pranaya becomes very intense, it becomes raga, uh, with a great joy on meeting the Lord. And then more intense than that is anuraga, uh, where one experiences the object of love in newer and newer ways all the time. Uh, and then more intense than that is mahabhava, uh, uh, in which uh, the sattvika bhavas, like um, crying, fainting, 
shivering of the body, choking of the voice, they all occur in a very, very intense form simultaneously. Yeah? Uh, so that's called Ruda. And they become the more intense, it's called Adiruda. <laughs> and within that we have Modana uh, uh, and Madana. And within Modana we have Mohana and separation, which gives rise to a type of madness, as when um, uh, Radharani was talking to the bumblebee. So that's called Divyon Mada and separation. Uh, and this Madana uh, is uh, a special type of ecstasy present in Radha at all times. Uh, and then this gives life to all the other bhavas in the spiritual world. Uh, so the Mahabhava is exemplified in Radha, and then she has these intense states of Modana and Madana. Yeah, like that. Uh, so various personalities can get up to different levels. In Dasya Rasa, generally you get up to Prema. In Sakya Rasa, you get up to Sneha. In Vatsaya, it goes up to Raga. It is said that um, Yasoda is continuously in Raga. It has great, great attachment for Krishna at all times. And then in Madhurya Rasa, we get Man, that's anger. Uh, Pranaya, this uh, great intimacy. Anuraga. This can manifest in the gopis, but not in the queens of Dorka. Mahabhava, again, in the gopis, not in the queens of Dorka. And then in Mahabhava, we get uh, Radha that gets this high level of Madana. You know, and so various levels of love exist in the spiritual world in the various rasas. Yeah. Sakya rasa, Vatsalya rasa. And Madhurya Rasa. And Radha has got the ultimate form of Mahabhava and Madhana. So, because she's the highest devotee and has the highest ecstasy with Krishna, that relationship with Krishna is the highest. And therefore, that's why we worship Radha and Krishna uh, as the uh, main deity in our temple because that's the highest form of uh, love in the spiritual world. Okay, any question there? <clears throat> There's no microphone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in uh, Navadip Dharma Hapmya, Bhakti Vinod says that some people come to the Dham but they're actually not there. Hmm. So he says that the Dham is covered by a, a film <laughs> and they can't get in. They're, they're walking all over the Dham but actually they're not there because it's all covered up for them because of their materialistic uh, attitude. So therefore they don't experience anything of the Dham because of that. So if you're a materialist you don't get the proper effect. So therefore you have to approach the Dham as a devotee of the Lord, then you get the proper effect. So even living in the Dham wouldn't have an impact because the consciousness is materialistic? Is that correct? What is that? So even living in the If you got the wrong consciousness, it's not so good. Of course, if we're devotees, then hopefully we got them at least some aspect of favorability so good. Um, like any type of devotional service, various types of devotees can get various effects and they get, like, even if it's accidental bhakti, you can get an effect. So uh, you chant Narayan's name as Ajamil, then you get some effect, like destruction of karmas. So if one goes to the Dham, one is not offensive to the Lord in any way, it accidentally goes there, one can get an effect from that. Uh, if one is a very gross materialist, a sinful person who is, has, hates the Lord, then of course 
you won't get any effect, like an aparati, then they don't get any effect. So, and if one is a devotee of sorts, then he gets some effect. If he's a greater devotee, then he even gets more effect. <laughs> because there's less, he has less coverings, etc. And the If they are offense. Well, yeah. The, if you commit offense, then it's very, very serious. Um, we also have offenses to the Dham, like we have offenses to the devotees. So if we're going to live in the Dham, then we have to be very, very careful that we don't offend devotees, and we don't offend the Dham in any way. Otherwise, it backfires, and then we get negative results also. Yeah. And um, mentioned that when we bathe in Radha Kunda, it's, uh, it's generally not the same, but in the last, uh, one of the last slides, it says, Manasa Puja to, to worship Radha Kunda in the mind. Because I remember my Guru Maharaj when I went to Vandana years ago, the Krishna Goswami said, we should just honor Radha Kunda. Sprinkle some water on your head. <laughs> yeah. yeah, otherwise you may offend the Dham by our activities. Yeah. So in any case, we have to avoid offense <laughs> when we're doing all these activities. There's that um, uh, that festival, uh, Radhakun Snan, on uh, I think after Govardhan Puja or something. At that time, they all gather at midnight or something, and they celebrate. Do they all bathe at that time? Do they go in the water at that time? They don't bathe in it. Yeah, well, a lot of them do, yeah, because that they go there and bathe. This, so I think the local people and they, you know, like that, they bathe there. Yeah. I was just reading uh, about the uh, uh, Namdita, so the Lord finding Namdita is speaking of uh, before you can enter the Dhamma. Ah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's recommending meditating on the Chaitanya's Astakalaya. It's like a Vishnu Chakra Gita, for instance. So, the eight really best times of the Chaitanya. And I'm just wondering if you think Rupa Goswami would mention something about the Chaitanya and his. Such an essential teaching, uh, this nectar of destruction. And uh, before jumping to. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> You'll go to Navadri uh, first. Uh, 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 you mentioned something about serving, or you should tell me that. Well, uh, actually, the glorification in Navadip seems to it becomes much more prominent <laughs> with Bhaktivinoda Thakur because he discovered the many places there and then he wrote many works glorifying it. So he gets much more prominence to it at that time. Of course, Prabodhananda Saraswati has one work attributed to him, about, which is a glorification of Navadip also. Uh, but uh, and I think also in Bhakti Ratnakar that occurred. So that was written several hundred years afterwards, and we get a glorification of Navadvipa also. Uh, but we'll find less probably at the time of the Goswamis, uh, and more later on uh, with the development of the worship of Lord Chaitanya, etc. Then they get more glorification of Navadvipa. So when it comes to um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur and writing Navadvipa Dhammahapnyas, then it's quite, it's quite logical what he says because we approach Radha and Krishna through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That by his mercy, then we can understand Radha and Krishna. That was uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's whole purpose in 
manifesting himself in this world so that we can approach Radha and Krishna. So it's through mercy of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu we can understand Radha and Krishna. Uh, so similarly, uh, uh, we can approach uh, first Lord Chaitanya and his Dhamma, Navadvipa. Uh, and after we get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and his Dhamma, then we're more qualified to go to Vrindavan and worship Radha and Krishna. So that's the, the logic there that he establishes. Uh, I don't know if there are so many works written previously on the glorification of Navadi. I can't recall. But, uh, it's interesting if there is, but uh, obviously Vrindavan gets prominently glorified at that time. Um, of course, even in like Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, we don't find direct glorification of Lord Chaitanya. It's all Radha and Krishna and the Rasa there. Yeah, he told him to go there and discover the places of Krishna's pastimes and write scriptures to uh, prove all of the uh, theological statements of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and glorifying the place with his pastimes. attached to them. <laughs> they forgot about them completely, the new calves. <laughs> but nobody noticed how strange it was. Yeah, because they're all in yoga maya. <laughs> but he only realized after one year that it was very strange. And then he recalled, yeah, it was very strange. It's been going on for a year, this whole thing where the, the cows are so intoxicated with these old calves and they're continually going after these calves and the, and the parents are so attached to their children suddenly. I mean, he didn't notice that for one, until one year later. And he says, oh, this is very strange. Yeah, very much so. They got attracted to their own sons. <laughs> It's, it's, all accord, it's all according to qualification. If you're qualified for that, then it naturally develops. 
uh, so we don't unnaturally try to jump to a certain qualification. When that qualification develops, then naturally everything that is suitable for that gets arranged by Krishna and his mercy, etc. So it should be a natural development. On the other hand, we can't say that Prabhupada forbade it because we have the whole Chaitanya Charitamrita, which is basically Raghunuga. <laughs> and that's where he says you can only get Krishna and Vrindavan by doing Raghunuga. <laughs> that's the teachings there. So then why did Prabhupada interrupt the Bhagavatam translation to translate the Chaitanya Charitamrita? So that's one thing that's there, one important aspect of Chaitanya Charitamrita that it does uh, mention this Raghunuga and the that path quite strongly. Yeah. And that's undeniable there. If you just look at the text, <laughs> it goes on. So it's not that he uh, is uh, hiding it or anything like that, but one has to be qualified to you know, practice it. So therefore, uh, he found that most of his devotees that he had initiated weren't qualified for, so therefore he didn't emphasize that at all. So back to the question, Well, yeah, I yeah. Okay, you can yeah. Modify, but I don't know how to yeah. Modify, yeah. Yeah. I'm still struggling with my mind, chances are wrong, and the principle. Then, yes, and then you're right. Then, <laughs> then I think, okay, I think, okay, this is very beautiful, very smart, mm. very fantastic, and some people can reach there, but maybe I'm not in the world, so we're going to strictly in the Another, Another interesting thing is Prabhupada wrote the Krishna book yeah. before he went on to all the cantos. He did the Krishna book first, then he went back to the second, third, fourth, fifth canto. So he wanted to get that, you know. He wanted to the the Yeah, yeah. So make it available for us even if... <laughs> so we're not fully qualified for it, but at least putting an emphasis that is there for those who can develop to that level. In the uh, Bhakti Sandarbha Jiva Goswami mentions that if you cannot do Raghunuga completely, you can mix the Vaidhi and the Raghunuga together and you have elements of both there, huh? uh, which may be easier for some persons. Huh? And I've also explained in other places that um, within Iskan we call it Vaidhi Bhakti and we're worshipping Radha and Krishna Vaidhi Bhakti. So the process of archana itself is pancharatric, so that is Vaidhi in itself. The, the method we use to, you know, worship the deity in whatever form, whether it's Krishna or any other form, it's Vaidhi by its nature you know, within the temple. Uh, however, we do, uh, we are worshiping Radha Krishna <laughs> rather than Vishnu or, some, or Krishna even in Dwarka, we're worshiping Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan. Uh, so that's an indication that we're going in the direction of Vrindavan uh, rather than in Dwarka or Vaikuntha or anywhere else. Uh, and uh, we read about Krishna all the time. We're studying Bhagavatam, <laughs> which is a work on Krishna leading up to his pastimes in the tenth canto, uh, the center of which is Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan. So again, uh, with an emphasis on Bhagavatam, in, in general, we're going in that direction of, you know, appreciating Krishna and Vrindavan, and we call Krishna Swayam Bhagavan. So why is he Swayam Bhagavan? Because he manifests these four qualities in Vrindavan. Madhurya Rupa, Madhurya Leela, Madhurya Bhakta, and Madhurya Venu, the flute. <laughs> these are all manifested in Vrindavan again. So 
you know, the whole emphasis of Bhagavatam is why I'm Bhagavan Krishna. So reading the Bhagavatam gets us in that direction also. Uh, and of course it's up to the individual how much he wants to uh, do the Vaidhi and how much he wants to concentrate on the sweeter aspects of Krishna. But uh, though we are having this um, within the organization, we have rules and regulations that are more or less Vaidhi, still there's freedom there to develop that spontaneous mood to Krishna also within that structure. So we can say it's a mixture. Well, this is the whole problem. That's why Bhakti Siddhanta Sahasri Thakur uh, was fighting with so many different groups because, uh, and then he was you know, because they were like taking the process but not following it properly. And so they would take the Siddha Pranali, but they wouldn't be following it properly. So how can they claim to be? You know, I got my Siddha Day, but they weren't even practicing it. So uh, it, that the, the form is, you know, would say the. The formality of that is not what's important, it's that you, if you practice it, fine. And even if you don't get this to as I said, you, it come internally anyway, as you develop. So it, it's not that we have complete dependence upon that particular form uh, of uh, the of Babaji giving you the initiation or whatever with your Manjari form and you know, 11 aspects of it, etc. My understanding is that the crowd about the he didn't promote that type of, yeah. um, how do you say, practice or yeah. meditation. It's just because in Kali Yuga, it will be really, it's not really recommended. It's, it's a little difficult to, to preach <laughs> that type of Raga Nuga to people in general. And uh, what Gorky Shar says, your Swarup is revealed by chanting Hare Krishna. So <laughs> everything's in the holy name also, ultimately. So we chant Hare Krishna, then we can develop in the same way. And gradually our relationship with Krishna is revealed. As I said, even if you don't, if you do Vaidhi Bhakti, eventually you get your Sarup also in the spiritual world. Huh? So, yeah, well, well, we hanker, we hanker for Krishna and serving Krishna, and then that develops. Huh? And, and of course, if, if it aids us, then we can do it. If we find it difficult, then we then we'll do other things. But if, if it aids us, then we can then develop in that direction. Well, in, in general, it is. <laughs> oh, you should read it, and you'll see. <laughs> he gives several statements there that you can't attain Raja unless you Raja Krishna unless you do Raghunuga Bhakti. He says that directly there in the text. But what is the difference between And of course, we get a whole section with Ramananda Roy. The whole latter section is all <laughs> Madhurya Rasa, <laughs> pastimes of gopis and Krishna, and <laughs> things like that. And that's also Raghunuga. But that seems more natural and more sincere than just getting it. In well, yeah, that, that's, why, that's why Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasev Thakur avoided it because that was like artificial and people that weren't qualified did it and then they didn't, it's just a name for them. I got this initiation, so I'm like this, you know, but actually they weren't at that level. So it's not even a good Well, you don't artificially do it. As I say, according to qualification, then you could do, but. Uh, we don't have any arrangement anyway for getting your citizen root within ISKCON, so that's another problem. So, <laughs> other way, we just naturally develop a chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> but even they don't have it directly, really. Well, yeah. But <laughs> yeah.
Well, indirectly. It's indirectly. Huh? Where? In books. Oh, well, we'll find in different Puranas like Padma Purana or Brahma Vavarta Purana, and then there's pastimes of Radha and Krishna mentioned directly there. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, the Goswami's other works have Radha, Krishna, Leela, and Vishnu Chakravarti, they have pastimes. Etc. But the worship of Radharani started after Lord Chaitanya? Uh, there is some worship before, so we have like uh, Jayadev Goswami writing about Radha Krishna pastimes. In his, yeah. Lord Chaitanya would listen to Jayadev and uh, was it Chandi Das and Vijapati. There were a few poets who were writing about Radha Krishna previous to Lord Chaitanya also. Uh, in one sense, of course, um, we find, of course, in Vrindavan, they're not all um, a female. We have males, Nanda Maharaj, the elder cowherd man. We have the cowherd boys also. So the other um, uh, rasas, we get uh, Sakya Rasa, that's a male. Uh, Vatsal could be either man or woman, as mother or father. <laughs> Dasya, uh, for Krishna, would be male again. Shantarasa, generally male, could be female also, possibly. So it could be uh, the form you take is there, but in constitution we're all servants, so in that sense we're female. <laughs> we're servants. We're not, the Purusha means the dominating person, and, or the master, and the female means the servant. So we're all Nitya Krishna Das, so in that sense we're all Prakriti, we're all uh, serving the Purusha. But um, within the spiritual world, then that takes various forms of service. And, so maybe male or female there. But it's quite unlike the male and female in the material world. The Gomuki. The Gomuki. <laughs> yeah, well, the uh, I think Sri Krishna Sharanam Gacha or something like that. Sri Krishna Sharanam something, I think that's their mantra. Where, where did the mantra take it I don't know. <laughs> Introduced by Vallabhacharya, I suppose, or he got it from some Shastra, I suppose. Yeah. And what about the other for example? Who don't know what they change? Om Namo Narayanaya. And they change the other Many don't. <laughs> so there's, I don't know, maybe their Gayatri mantra also, possibly. Um, and Madhva's, I think, Om Namo Bhagavade Vasudeva is one of their mantras. But I don't know how much sadhana they do because they concentrate a lot on the deity worship rather than either japa or kirtan. They don't do that. That's not their sadhana. So it's, it's our sampradaya that has kirtan as the main sadhana. So we chant Hare Krishna also in relation to that. So we also get mantra, but we, we're concentrating on Hare Krishna. <laughs> yeah. So uh, as for balabos, I don't know. Do they do kirtans? I don't know, but but uh, but the uh, deity worship seems to be very prominent there. Yeah, very very prominent the yeah. deity worship. So probably the Nam Sankirtan is not the Yuga Dharma for them. I don't know. <laughs> so. Yeah. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. It's largely internal, as I'm saying, yeah. So that's not something we publicize anyway. <laughs> so you can do the external activities like this uh, Avaidi Bhakta, and plus you do the internal as well, which is concentration on, you know, the meditation aspect. Okay, Hare Krishna.